It's time for another episode of Rainmaker for Contractors. Interviews and success stories with million dollar plus basement waterproofing and foundation repair owners. Discover how they market and grow their companies in today's economy. Hear directly from the most successful leaders in your industry. With your host and Rainmaker for Contractors owner, Bill Crawford. Hey, well, welcome everybody to the Rainmaker for Contractors podcast. Today we have a really special guest. I've known this gentleman for several years. We met in the Basement Health Association. He has a really unique story. Can't wait for you to hear it. Let me introduce Chris. Actually, Chris, let me ask you to introduce yourself. Can you tell us about uh, your business, your services, maybe your coverage area and things like that? Excellent. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Christopher Mancuso, and I'm the owner of Accurate Basement Repair in Milwaukee, and we serve southeastern Wisconsin, and we're an organic startup from about 15 years old, give or take, and um, it's been a wild ride and a great ride, and I'm happy to talk a little bit about it today with with you and your folks. Cool, cool. Sorry to interrupt you there. Hey, I know you have a unique story. You made a huge career change, uh, you know, halfway through your life. What did you do before basement waterproofing? So it wasn't really before basement waterproofing. It was kind of during and sort of before and sort of after. So my secondary career, not only am I the owner of Acre Basement Repair and it's a full service foundation restoration waterproofing company, but for the last 17, 15 years of that, um, for 20, over 20 some years, almost 25 years, I was an active firefighter for the Milwaukee Fire Department. So it was interesting because it kind of started off like a lot of firemen do some stuff on the side, sort of. And that's kind of what it started off on. Hey, well, let's fix some basements. Um, I was always a pretty handy guy and, you know, into building stuff. And all of a sudden it went from here to here. Uh, it just went up and up and up. And never really look back so we um it really helped me develop as a business owner just knowing the the same type of strategies that went into the fire department it's a very um it's a pseudo military type of environment um that's the way the structure is the structure right there's there's firefighters and there's lieutenants and captains. That's right. You, and you got to follow orders if you're going to deal with fires, right? Yep. And, and it really teaches you about leadership and consistency and prepping every day um, and routines, especially the prepping and the routines part, Bill, was humongous for us here. Mm. It taught us about having systems and processes for everything. Um the fire department in Milwaukee is well over a hundred years old. So they have tweaked these systems and processes. And I was an officer for 14 of my, of my years there. So wow. you really got that type of, uh, of, of continuity and um, consistency toward my business. And it also taught us too some things that you, you, you can't get done and you need help with. Mm-hmm. So, Remember when you're a when you're a firefighter, you can't leave. There's if you can't get it done, there's nobody else to call. So you get you you have to get it figured out. So that was a huge part of a learning curve for accurate as a business was to go. Well, you know we need to seek some help from other strategic partners. That's how we got involved with with with. Bill and Rainmaker was we understood, look, we can't handle the the digital marketing end of what we do. As firefighters, you had to figure it out. But again, that was one of the difficult parts was trying to to make that separation to know, look, I can do my QuickBooks, but, you know, I really should have a professional in. So there was some learning curve early in with part of that. Um, And it probably waited a little bit too long to take advantage of some of the really smart people that we're surrounded by as, um, as business owners to, to look at when we need to reach out for help. Um, just because you read a book about it or, you know, go to a blog, right. Or, 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 uh, a video cast doesn't make you an expert. That's most right. Is, yeah. There's most certainly knowing when to reach out to the experts and gaining these relationships with people too. Um, that was another thing we had learned 
early on was relationships. Um, you know, I, I met you in the Basement Health Association, like probably over a decade ago, right? And so oh, yeah. even back then you were networking with other professionals that, you know, everyone, uh, you can't be an expert at everything. So even back then you've been networking and relying on experts. That, that's, I've been in this industry 25 years and I don't know, I actually know one other person that's a retired fireman who owns his company. So I love that story. I think it's really special. Hey, when you're in a, when you're in a home, how do you position yourself differently in the customer's eyes? Like what's unique about Accurate versus other companies? So when we come in, we've always dealt and always have had the mindset real similar. Go back to the fire department again. We go back to courage, honor, and integrity. That's what the motto is um, in the culture for where I came from for all those years, all those years. Wow. And that same courage, honor, integrity is what, what I brought into accurate basement repair. Mind you, we've had to settle, we've had to, we've had to tweak some things because we're not running a pseudo military environment there most certainly, but those are the things that we presented to, to our customers, that, that model and being able to, to confront the customer, but not in a, in a, who's going to win and who's going to lose our argument, but make sure that there's, that both sides ha have a win in it. Um, sure. I'm, I'm in a, I'm in a business in this, this basement um, foundation restoration, waterproofing type of business. People are generally unhappy um, when you come to their houses because um, they're going, whoa, I have to spend all this money on my basement. I'm not getting my kitchen cabinets. I'm not, getting my new windows. They're not getting this value of something they can visually put their eyes on. Um, so they're kind of in a little bit of a tainted mood already. They don't like to have to spend that. So as you're going through this repair process, you know, it can get, people can get fairly critical. Um, you know, they're wondering why is it so much, right? right? Why does it cost so much to fix this? And, you know, why do I have to do it? As a homeowner, you don't have to do anything. But it behooves you to have a sound foundation. Um, I mean, that's Joel House sits on top of. But how we've rolled the courage, honor, and integrity into the presentation that we give people that we go to see is that look, if it, through those philosophies, we're going to make sure we do the right thing for you every time and not try to sell you something you don't need. If it's broke, we're going to fix it. But what we tell people is understand every basement at some point is going to get fixed. It's going to get fixed. So even if I do two walls today, at some point, could you end up doing the other two? Probably. It might be two months from now. It might be 22 years from now. I don't know. But know when we come in, we're going to tell you honestly what we think is broken and what needs to be fixed. And that is reflective in a lot of the reviews that we get when we get customers that are unhappy bill sometimes and it happens right oh you guys were supposed to do xyz and i didn't know and you you cracked this window or you ran over my favorite rose bush hopefully we have all these things kind of figured out but it's an invasive business but again we're not the company that's hard to get a hold of call sure. us up we go that's, that's part of the, having that courage and the honor and, and the integrity is for decades, you know, I at least were running into to challenges and situations at the fire department, running into areas of need, not running away from them, running into crisis, not running away. So, yeah. You know, that sets me up for, a, you know, a question I wanted to ask you. I'm sure there's been a time, you know, we live in a cynical society. And people assume, oh, this is a contractor, you know, are they doing their job? What? And so I'm sure things have happened. How have you dealt with, you know, a, a challenging negative situation? What, what, what do you typically do in that scenario? So, and this happens fairly often. So any contractor, especially in this business that says, yeah, I don't get many complaints. No, you're going to get them. You're going to get them. People can't comprehend the invasiveness of what we do. We're digging in mud 
in your home, where you live. Again, you may not live in the basement. It's a lot of people have rec rooms down there, or most certainly they may be doing laundry, or but it's still within the, the roof of that structure. So when we're in there and we describe all these things, show them videos about what we're doing, seeing and believing two different things. Again, we go through all these repetitiously, but so people come on in, they'll go, oh my gosh, I didn't, I didn't know that this was going to be like this. We are very, we are very forthright about um, confronting our customers. And I don't want to say confronting in a negative way, but you have to be proactive. You can't be reactive just because we do this every day, right? Ah, no big deal. We do this every day. And that's what happens in our own minds is we don't understand how traumatic this is to Joe and Jane Smith, who the last biggest project they ever did was had, you know, six windows replaced. And now all of a sudden they're, you know, doing, you know, a, a big trench system around their house and there's huge equipment. Um, so we have really learn to adapt to that environment. And it goes back to being, um, again, going back to the fire department and knowing that, hey man, we used to go on EMS calls and people would have heart attacks and crisis situations. You know, we, we'd go to birthday parties and grandma would die on the floor in front of everybody. I'm real. And just because this is our third death of the day or of the week, we got to understand this is something new for these people, right? So putting yourself in someone else's shoes, showing empathy mm. um, is huge. Um, wow. Again, people don't, that empathy, I think it's lacking in general, in people in general nowadays, but contract, I think as a contractor, you most certainly have to try to empathize with your customer at their level of where they're coming from. Um, you know, like, you know, the old model, right? Walk a mile in my shoes. Maybe these, that's right. You know, that's right. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yeah. It's, it yeah, can be you know, you have, but we, we keep that up the forefront. For sure. I, I got to think you have a, from a contractor's perspective with who you are and your background that you have a very unique company culture. I'm guessing some of your values get, um, you know, displaced in a good way into your employees. So that's pretty cool. Hey, uh, let me ask you, what is EOS? What does it stand for? And how does it relate to your business? So what, what EOS is, EOS is called the Entrepreneur's Operating System. And that is a very popular management platform over the last, I'd say, five years especially, has really ballooned. So as contractors or business owners, most certainly you can visit EOS, Entrepreneur's Operating System Online, and find out about it. It gives opportunities for business owners to have a relief. And what I mean by that is, so we give a 20-year warranty on stuff that we do. So that 20-year warranty for most contractors is as good as me, as good as me right here. As long as I have longevity, that's how long the, the, the warranty is. With EOS, it has given me an opportunity to formulate my business in a way that is bigger than just Chris Mancuso. So EOS, whether I'm here today or tomorrow, Accurate will not only survive, but thrive within that management environment to be able to sustain that if I give Bill a 20-year warranty on his foundation that we're really going to be around for 20 years and not two weeks from now I get in a car accident, God forbid, um, and, and accurate is, is sorry that warranty has gone. But that is a huge part of how accurate has developed themselves into the next level of foundation restoration of water programming companies within the country is that we've taken these steps to give people a real grasp of what a real warranty means. So sure. we're excited about it. That's great. That's great. I know EOS is a huge commitment. I've heard great things about it. So I've got to think that your company is, has kind of gone through some changes over the years that you've been implementing EOS into your, into your system. Let's see. Let me uh, jump back if I could to uh, customer reviews. How, how are you getting customer reviews? Like when do you ask? What platforms do you use? And how, how's that going? So, 
prior to Rainmaker is a big part of our review process. Um, you know, you and I have talked about it in detail and other, and other people on your team, uh, just like the people on my team have talked about how do we get there. And what we found is we, we have developed a relationship with, with customers where we get a, a lot of, we give a lot of reviews from people we haven't even done business with. Um, they appreciate our honesty, right? Courage, honor, and integrity. They appreciate that, 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 that being, you know, having to, the, the, my, my, my inspectors out in the field, they have the courage and the honor and the integrity not to have to bid every job just because they go to your house. They don't have to sell you something. We have been blessed with the opportunity to have a plethora of opportunities. So if I go to Bill's house and you don't need your basement to be fixed, we'll tell you, hey, you know what? You really need to fix this downspout. People are so appreciative of that, 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 that cultural commitment that they'll go and write reviews and tell people, look, these guys didn't try to sell me something. And what's really great is that's how Rainmaker came into play. They have introduced us to a, a digital platform um, that we can use right off of our smartphone where they digitally get sent a, a text message to go into an opportunity to do reviews right on the spot. Nice. It's pretty cool. And it's worked out really well. So we thank Rainmaker for that. Um, they put a lot of time and effort into it. So it's worked out great. It's a great platform. Awesome. I appreciate the shout out, but I'm not looking for them. But anyway, I'm glad you're getting reviews. Uh, that's awesome. You know, so many contractors think, oh, I can get a review if I do a great job and install a great system. And then some of the people that I ask will get a review. So really innovative, actually, on your part to, to get reviews for customers. When, yeah, I think a typical sales rep would kind of blow out the lead and not go the extra effort because they saw, gosh, I can't sell anything. It doesn't fit our system. There's no opportunity to make money. So they leave. Here you are going way above and beyond and probably giving recommendations on what really needs to, be, to get done, whether yeah, they sell it or not. Part yeah. of that is too, I've been around this community my whole life. Right. Um, I grew up in the area. Um, I went to college in the area. Um, I volunteer in the area. I, you know, I was again, big in the fire department and our union and our politics and all the other stuff that goes with it. So, you know, when you're as an individual or as a contractor, just remember, you know, people are critiquing you all the time, good, bad, or indifferent, you know, Absolutely. they're, they're looking for figures in their life to go, you know what? It's a pretty nice guy or, you know, it's great. It's, they're honest company, you know, really. And my dad said something when we first started this business, you know, um, there's, there's, a, there's a, a food chain or a grocery store chain called Pick and Save. And that's kind of, you know, it's a big uh, grocery store kind of line. And my dad said to me one day, he said, you know, you're starting this business. He goes, you better do things right. He goes, I don't want to be going down the, the darn deli aisle and run into somebody, you know, one of your, you know, and I'm wearing your sweatshirts all the time. They go, hey, your kid was a bleep, bleep, bleep. You know, I don't know what kind of business he was running. So my dad told me that and he said, you know, you do the right thing so I can be proud when I'm walking down the deli aisle that I'm wearing that. one of your sweatshirts. I love yeah. it. That's how it should be, right? Instead of running on the other side of the street or the other aisle. And that's, what we and that's what we tell all everybody on the team, whether you're an installer or whether you're at the management level, is that when you wear one of these shirts and my people wear them proudly all the time, all the time. And they're always getting at the gas station. Oh, you work for Accurate? Oh, man, I love that place. They they took care of my grandma's house, and she was super happy, and they did a great job. And, you know, grandma was super happy, or they did my mom's house, or they did my friend's house, or my neighbor's house. So my or our team is very proud to wear this logo wherever they go That's in good. southeastern Wisconsin because they're going to get a thumbs up. That's awesome, Chris. Hey, let me ask you, uh, let me ask you one last question, and that is – can you share a story with us that there is a point in your business where you felt really discouraged? You thought, oh man, th this is horrible. What's going to happen? Yeah, you work through it. And then perhaps a year or five years later, you look back and you realize, wow, that was a defining moment. Like that helped us get to where we're at today. So we call it something called hit the ceiling. 
Uh, that's something you'll see here in EOS too. So as as contractors, as we're as we start to grow, um, it, you get to a point where you just can't manage everything. So and it gets discouraging because you're thinking you're losing control, um, and you are. That you're you you are losing control. So you have to be ready for it. I'll be honest, I really wasn't that discouraged because there, again, I go back to the fire department. There were many times when you're in a fire and you're losing control. You're losing, but you got to recognize it and get, get your, you know, get your butt out of there and be able to call in and, and, and look for help. And again, transferring those lessons learned was a big deal for us. Um, but that was probably the most stressful is when we went from this level to this level, um, especially when we recognize the amount of customer care involved. Go, oh my gosh, can we do this? Yeah, we can. We can. We just have to instill some different principles and again seek out these 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 other people to help us out. Because mm. can't solve every problem. That's right. on your own. That is. That's right. Hey Chris, thank you so much for being on this show. I love your company. I love the company culture that you have there and all the success that you have. I'm wishing you the best. Absolutely. You have a blessed day. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Chris. Take care. You've been listening to the Rainmaker for Contractors podcast, where basement waterproofing and foundation repair business owners and industry experts share marketing and sales information that helps you reach more customers. Please leave us a review on iTunes or your favorite podcast platform and get all of our show notes at rainmakerforcontractors.com slash podcast. 